Welcome back everybody. Patrick here moving on with capital structure. We're now going to be talking about the M&M propositions with taxes. And we already went over the M&M propositions without taxes. And because there's only going to be subtle differences, we're probably going to move through this video series a lot quicker than the one without taxes. So I'd highly recommend you watch that one first before getting into this one if you haven't already. So to do a quick little review, if you remember M&M Proposition 1 without taxes basically stated that no matter what the capital structure of a firm is, or in other words, no matter what the mix of debt and equity, the value of the firm is always going to be the same. So M&M Proposition 1 without taxes is usually stated as the value of an unlevered firm equals the value of a levered firm. Well, when you start incorporating taxes, the M&M Proposition 1 is actually going to change. It's going to be different than this. And the main difference when taxes are involved is that on the debt, the interest payments that the firm is making is tax deductible. And that's going to be the reason why the value of firms is going to differ. They're not going to be constant anymore like they were without taxes. Now that interest is tax deductible when taxes are involved, that's going to be the difference in between the firms. And you can actually see how interest is deducted on an income statement. So I drew out a general format of an income statement over here. And notice that we have the earnings before interest and taxes. We subtract interest there, we deduct it, then we get earnings before taxes. And then we just take that earnings before taxes and multiply it by some kind of percentage, whatever the tax rate is, in order to get these taxes here. Well, notice the more interest that we deduct, the lower that earnings before taxes number is gonna be, hence the lower our taxes are gonna be. So we can make a general conclusion here that with taxes, the more debt that a firm takes on, the more interest they're going to pay, the less taxes then they're going to pay. And if they're paying less taxes, there's more cash left over, which results in a larger firm value. Now you may be asking yourself, well, if they're taking on more debt, that means that they're paying more interest as well. So aren't their expenses going up? And that's a fair question. However, notice that if they didn't have any debt, then it would be all equity. And they would have to be paying a return to the equity holders as well. So whether there's debt or whether there's no debt, the firm is gonna have to pay some kind of return to that right side of the balance sheet. Now the problem with equity is that when we pay that return to equity holders, that's not tax deductible like interest is. So we don't get that tax advantage, we don't get that tax shield like we do when we take on debt. Hence, the more debt we take on, less taxes, larger firm value. Now bringing a concept back from earlier in finance, in capital budgeting, if you remember the depreciation tax shield, was basically equal to the depreciation expense every year times the tax rate. And you can actually generalize this. Basically, the tax shield on an income statement from any expense, so an expense tax shield, it's always just going to equal whatever that expense is times the tax rate. So if you make an income statement with a certain tax rate and then you add an expense well that reduction in your taxes is always just going to be that expense times the tax rate you could even try it yourself it will always just follow this formula here well in this specific case when we're talking about these m m propositions we're talking about the interest expense so the interest tax shield that a firm receives, if we follow this general formula here, is just basically equal to the interest expense 
times the tax rate. And we can go even further into detail. How do we calculate the interest expense every year on that income statement? Well, what we usually do is we take the debt, the total debt on the balance sheet of a firm, and we multiply it by the interest rate on that debt. And then multiplying it by the tax rate gives us that interest tax shield. Now this interest tax shield here is on a per year basis. However, unless a firm is paying off its debt within one year, which rarely happens, you're gonna be receiving this interest tax shield over multiple years. And hence, to know the benefit of that interest tax shield, what you have to do is you have to present value that interest tax shield from the future to the present for all years in the future. So, so far what we have summarized is that the more debt a firm has, the larger that interest tax shield that they're gonna get, meaning the less taxes they're gonna pay, meaning a larger firm value. So let's show how this happens visually. So let's say we have a firm and let's draw the balance sheet of this firm. And let's say that this firm is all equity, meaning that there is no debt. The right side of that balance sheet is just all equity, 100% equity. So this here is an unlevered firm, right? Leverage, meaning that there is debt. Well, if a company has no debt, then they are unlevered. And then here, let's draw the balance sheet for a company or the same company rather. But instead of them being all equity, now they're going to have some debt. So let's say they maybe went through a restructuring so what happened was they borrowed debt and then they used that debt to repurchase equity. So the equity portion went down and then that remaining portion got filled in with debt. So this here is a levered firm. It's the same firm, right? The assets on the left side is still the same. However, now they're levered, they have more debt. And because that lever firm has more debt than this one, they're going to get an interest tax shield. And so the difference in the value between these two firms is basically the present value of the interest tax shield. So the value of an unlevered firm plus the present value of an interest tax shield is equal to the value of the levered firm. And this here is basically M&M proposition one with taxes. That's it. And instead of writing unlevered firm in your textbook, you might see it represented as the value of an unlevered firm. And then the levered firm, instead of writing levered firm, they'll have like a V subscript L. So the value of an unlevered firm plus the present value of the interest tax shield is equal to the value of a levered firm. That is M&M proposition one with taxes. And a common misconception that uh, happens is that when you look at this proposition, you may think to yourself that you have to be dealing with an unlevered firm and a levered firm. However, that doesn't always have to be the case. Basically, you can have a firm that has less debt and the difference between a firm with less debt and a firm with more debt is still just gonna be the present value of the interest tax shield.
and actually I should put here present value of the interest tax yield of the difference in the debt. So let's write of the additional debt if you're dealing with two firms that have debt. Right, so it's just always the present value of the interest tax yield of that additional debt that you take on. So let's say you have a firm that has 20% um, debt, 80% equity, and then you restructure that firm for them to have maybe 40% debt, 60% equity. That equity went up, and the difference between the value of those firms, the value of this firm is going to be more because they have more debt, 40%, so they'll be paying less taxes. And the difference between those firms, the one with 20% debt, the one with 40% debt, it's just going to be the present value of that interest tax shield of the additional debt and the change in debt. All right, so I thought I would make a note on that, but usually when you're dealing with questions in this chapter, you're usually going to be given information about an unlevered firm. But just be aware of this. It doesn't necessarily have to be an unlevered firm. Now, what I'm going to cover in the next part is I'm going to go into a lot more detail in calculating what the present value of this interest tax shield is. We just sort of stated it in this video in words, but this debt can take on different forms. It can perhaps be temporary debt, meaning that we'll be paying it down over a few years, or it could be permanent debt, meaning that the firm keeps the debt forever and they're just making the interest payments. And depending on what kind of debt you're dealing with, the calculation for this interest tax shield is going to differ. So we'll cover that in more detail in part 